Hey there, everybody. I hope you are having a good Friday evening. Woohoo! The weekend's here, eh? Um, that's always a nice thing. It seems like I, I work every day, but there's something about the weekends that just have, I don't know, it just kind of has a different vibe to it. So happy weekend, everybody. I have two new junk journals going in the shop today. This one is A Night Out by Edward Pepple. It is 1934. This is Fairy Tales from Shakespeare. This is 1907. So let's look at the 1907 Fairy Tales from Shakespeare. Um, luckily, the spine of this book was still fairly intact, so I did make a, a bookmark to go with this book, and that, I mean, that was fun. That was the first time I had ever done that, and I tied it with just a dark color, kind of a purplish color, color um, sorry ribbon, so let's take a look at fairy tales from Shakespeare. And I love this because it's the first steps in Shakespeare for for little folks. So it's basically the tales of Shakespeare, but kind of retold by the author, the author so children can understand it. I absolutely love the cover. I just think it is super sweet. It's got the fairies up here and the bust of Shakespeare as well. So let's take a look of course, this book has been completely altered, but still has um, spaces for you to write in or draw in. Uh, we've got, we're using our 1880 ledger paper here. Um, I think that these are Diane Reevely um, napkins, you know, just a portion of those napkins. And I did do some decoupaging on some of the pages, so... You know, you do have a nice place to start. And, of course, we've got pockets here. Fairy Tales from Shakespeare was written by Faye Adams and illustrated by Clara Powers Wilson. The illustrations in this are crazy beautiful. I've arranged a belly band here for you, and this is a vintage postcard. There is another little tuck spot right here. Um, a little tuck spot right here. And it's got a vintage um, gift enclosure in this one. I thought those pinks went really nicely together. This has a little bit of decoupage as well. This is a nice big pocket for you to stick things into. This is the uh, the actual table of contents. It's illustrations. Uh, tells uh, where the illustrations are in the book. I just did a rough paint around that and I layered on some uh, this is just a, a pearl paint and that gives you a nice surface to work with of course it's not just so you guys it's paint so you know whatever you're going to put on here is going to reactivate so you know if you're using markers or something like that just always keep that in mind the notes from the author is really sweet as the child later on comes to read for itself the desire for Shakespeare's plays will have already been established and the youthful reader will find them full of interest and easier to understand I got a belly band arrangement right here for you this is actually a double belly band because this can fit right here uh, the first tale from Shakespeare is a Midsummer Night's Dream this is a gorgeous gorgeous illustration fairies sometimes quarrel and it I I mean I think you guys you could um, use this as a coloring book and just pencil these in. I'm not sure. I have to tell you, I was happy with the way that this book took paint because this is a painted piece right here and it did not um, bleed through the other side. I got a little bit of paint on this side, but that was, that was my, you know, that was my mistake. Um, but I'm not seeing a lot of bleed through here. The papers are nice and thick. Um, this is another little belly band arrangement here, a sweet little, um, uh, illustration of Puck. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take, love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or cat or bear, pard or boar with bristling hair, in thy eye that shall appear when thou wakest, it is thy dear." wake when some wild thing is near 
<laughs> I love that. Uh, we've got a little Lucy up here arranged as a tab, a tag, uh, like a pull right here. Of course, this book is arranged where you can take pages out, you know, and work with them. Or, you know, if you, if you do an illustration on a page and you want to take that out and put it into another book, then that's always fun too. Got a little pocket here for you with some lace. And these are, of course, vintage greeting cards. I love that one. I expect you know you top my list, Valentine. And it is from Linda H. This is from a 1950s ephemera collection. Another tab, tag, pull up here like a little Lucy. Uh, this is gorgeous. This is Portia and her fairy godmother. You've got another little place to tuck something in right here. Uh, we do pray for mercy. This is Portia in the court. Um, this is just such a cool story. I'm not going to ruin anything for you, but I thought it was important to leave the stories intact and um, decorate the pages as well. So I, I really hope you guys like that. Uh, another little tuck spot belly band arrangement here. We've got just a little flip up that you can stick something into right there. Uh, this is King Lear. I love your majesty according to your right. I believe this is Cordelia. I really love, I think that's Diane Reevely, you guys. I, I can't remember exactly, but I love the faces in those napkins. I just think they're super, super cool. More King Lear. This time a loose Lucy, a little Lucy uh, as a tuck spot for you. Collage pages. The Fairy Gods, Lear and Kent. We've got another belly band tuck spot right here. This is Kent and the Stocks. And this is another little uh, tuck spot, uh, little Lucy tab right here. The Winter's Tail. There's a pocket right there. More collage elements for you to play with. Another tuck spot right here. This is Perdita and Florizel. And this is a pocket right here and another little tab, um, little Lucy tab. Queen Hermione right here. And this, this book ends with another tuck spot. It's got a little bit of sparkling uh, ribbon on it. And there we go, you guys. This will go in the store a little later on this evening. This was <laughs> this is such a funny story. <laughs> it is. I'm not going to ruin it for you. I kept the story intact. Um, the book is called A Night Out, Edward Pepple. Um, I think the, um, the actual copyright on the book is 1909. It does have uh, the owner's name is printed in here, Ralph Edelby, uh, April 24th, 1934, and has his address. And this is a note that Miss, Mr. Mr. Loomis read at WMW. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, he read it on April the 19th, 1934. The Beast has had the time of his life. This kind of explains the book. Um, I think this is the, yeah, this is the 19, this is the 24th printing of the book, May 1933. And we've got some pages in here for you to write upon. This is also super sweet, you guys. This is um, a revised book plate motto that came, of course, in the book. Because so many friends, Gall Durham, who bother volumes don't return them, ex libris on my book plate looks as if it meant my former books, my obliges, but many thanks, Etta. <laughs> I thought that was really cute. Uh, and it is adhered into the book. So basically, the book is about a cat. Omar bin Sufi was a cat. This unadorned statement would have wounded Omar Ben to the marrow of his pride, for he chanced to be a splendid tiger-marked feline of purest 
Persian breed with the glorious yellow eyes and a Solomon in all his glory tail. Hold on a second. I'm going to take you in just, just a wee bit. He dwelt with an exclusive family of humans in a little $80,000 cottage on the outskirts of vulgarity, which is to say the villa was situated near enough to town to admit of marketing, but far enough removed therefrom to escape the clatter of plebeian toil and the noxious contact with the unhealthy, unwealthy herd. <laughs> The master did not toil. He lived for certain hours of the day in Wall Street, where he sank his patrician fingers into the throats of lesser men, squeezed them dry, then washed his hands in violet water and built a church. That, I love this language. Um, true, he did not attend this church himself, but he built it. Otherwise, his neighbors might have been deprived of the opportunity of praising God. Okay, so Omar Ben had a French maid all to himself, a perky little human with a quasi kinship to the feline race who combed him and brushed him and slicked him down and gave him endless mortifying baths. Also, she tied lavender bows about his neck and fed him from the Dresden China on minute particles of flaked fish and raw sirloin with a dessert of pasteurized cream. This is a pampered cat, and the story, <laughs> the story is that one night he is in the garden, and he meets this other cat. The cat's name is Pete, and Pete, friends, is a street cat. He is street smart, street savvy. Um... Here are their introductions. My ribbon name is Omar bin Sufi, firstborn of the second litter of Yiki Zutra and Sultana Yagi kids. Here at home, however, I am known by a variety of others, such as Mon Prince de Manier Charmant, uh, Sugar Pa, Precious, and now this is Pete. I'll cut it out. Dem ain't no decent names. <laughs> so you're kind of getting the idea of where this story is going. We got a belly band arrangement for you right here with some vintage pieces underneath and a tab right here. I did take advantage of just some cat ephemera that I had, uh, you know, some beautiful illustrations. Um, so the first thing that Pete does entice Omar Ben out, and um, they meet ladies, and there's a fight, and he. Pete enticed Omar Ben out with the prospect of eating frogs, which Omar Ben kind of fell in love with. And that's probably where the trouble began. Um, but it is a wonderful little read. This is a, a little illustration, The Cheshire Cat by Lewis Carroll. Here he's talking about the humans and their dinner time. And he wants to go out and catch frogs with Pete. This is where they meet the ladies. Now, this does kind of flip up so you can get the story right here. You can, of course, take this out and flip it up all the way. Um, another little flip, flip out right here with a vintage Valentine's card um, placed in the flip out. Another little flip up here with some places for you to journal. He also, Omar Ben Sufi, is, is um, introduced to pure, um, pure catnip. Now, he had only, he's only had catnip. It had been dry and in five cent packages, which was different from the pure article direct from nature's still and exuding its sharp, intoxicating breath. Pete and Omar fell upon it greedily, rolled upon it, wallowed among the scattered leaves, and chewed and chewed till their senses swam in a spirited dance of ecstasy. I have another little flip out for you. Uh, this is the part of the book where he gets um, in a fight with Ashcan Sam. And another little flip up here. These are from 
You know, I think this was from the um, Mother Nursery Rhymes book that we did. This was some pages that just could not be saved from that book. But, you know, you can always save the illustrations, right? Another little Lucy arranged as a tab right here. Another illustration. Collaged pages right here. And on the back, there is a... Um, the, the very last page has a little tag for you and a 1950s Valentine. And the rings in this book are large, but I kind of like them. I'm waiting on an order of one inch rings, so we'll, we'll change them out. But if you dig the bigger rings, then just let me know and we'll leave them like this. Uh, you know, we're looking at the smaller rings like this and I do have those on order because I cannot find them anywhere in town. Okay, you guys, thanks for hanging out with me on a Friday night. These books will go in the shop a little later this Friday night. Thank you guys for your support, for your kindness, for your sweet comments, and I will talk to you folks soon. Take care. Bye.